Hi, this is Dr. Marcellino D'Ambrosio, and today in Early Church Fathers, we're going to do a Christian Profiles in Courage. John F. Kennedy wrote that book, talking about great secular leaders who were courageous. The fathers of the church in the 4th and 5th century, they read like a book, Profiles in Courage. So many of the bishops of that era had to fight against not pagan rulers, but Christian rulers who tried to control the church and who tried to impose heresy on the people. But probably the most courageous of them all was John Chrysostom. John was a man from Antioch who studied law but abandoned law for the pursuit of Christ in monastic life. In monastic life, he took on penance with a vengeance and in two years ruined his health with overboard austerities. So he had to leave the monastery. He was called into service by the bishop of Antioch, became a deacon, then a priest. The bishop realized what a great treasure he had in John, that he had great gift as a preacher. So he asked John to feed the people with the word of God. And for the next 12 years, John Chrysostom spoke and taught homilies, commentaries on virtually every book of the Bible, so much of the Old Testament, so many books of the New Testament. John preached on everything, and his preaching wasn't above the heads of the people. That's what they loved. It really hit them where the rubber met the road, daily life, practical realities of life. That's what he specialized in, helping the Word of God be applied day in and day out by ordinary people in the marketplace, in school, at home, in the relation between husband and wife, father and child. This is where he shone and he gave life to so many people. His reputation as a preacher and as a man of God led to his election against his will to the greatest sea of the Eastern Catholic Church, and that was the Sea of Constantinople, the imperial city. This city was a cesspool morally, and unfortunately, the previous bishop had been controlled by, the, patri by the, the emperor, as many of the patriarchs were controlled by the emperor. No one would control John Chrysostom. He immediately began calling for moral reform, preaching the gospel very sternly. The empress was not amused because much of his preaching applied certainly to her. It didn't apply just to her, but her lifestyle was a nominal Christian lifestyle that was very vain and very much superficial. So yes, she was threatened by John, and she found an ally in a churchman, another bishop who was threatened by John, the Patriarch of Alexandria. Together, they conspired against John. They had him deposed on trumped-up charges, but the people loved him, and they cried out and protested. And so John was brought back, but once again, instead of backing down, he continued to speak out, speak out against the vanities of the aristocracy and the imperial court. They were not amused, and they sent him once again into exile. But this time, they sent him into such harsh conditions that they knew that those conditions would lead to his death. The old man who had injured his health was forced to march in terrible weather, a terrible road out into the boondocks, and very soon thereafter died. But this man who was a great teacher of the gospel this man who loved the scriptures also loved the liturgy. This man who was so devoted to the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist reformed liturgical life before he died. And to this day, the main liturgy that is celebrated throughout the Christian East, whether it be a Catholic or, or an Orthodox church, is known by, the, by his name, the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom.